Hey everybody! Boy, I picked a great time to start filming. It's raining and thundering and lightning out there. Hopefully power will stay on. Okay, so welcome to News of the Day. And I've got a bunch of little stories for you today. And um, also my quick thoughts on the upcoming quali uh, qualifying round. Montreal-Pittsburgh, it'll give you a few thoughts on that. And that's all right here at Talking Habs, and let's get right into it. So first, I'm going to give you a story not on the board. I was looking on Twitter just before coming, uh, filming. So Alex Romanov apparently is out of quarantine, and he's so excited to be out of quarantine that um, he got out of his room, and I, maybe the first person he saw was Paul Byron, challenged him to a hallway race. So uh, Alex Romanov quickly starting off his getting uh, to know the guys and uh, getting relationships started off on the Canadians, and good to know that he's out of quarantine. He can now practice with the team. He just can't play any of the games, but he can practice with them. Uh, when they're uh, when they get practice time, so the Alex Romanov um, uh, uh, era has started. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Okay, so official story on the board. Um, Oilers general manager Ken Holland has spoken to Jesse Pugliarvi and his agent apparently. So uh, let me go on to my uh, my story here. Edmonton GM Ken Holland is rumored. It's rumored to have uh, spoken to Jesse Pugliarvi and his agent. Now, I reported this, and I did. I reported this uh, possibility, I want to say a couple weeks ago, probably more like a month ago. Um, and it seems to be moving forward. They're talking, and apparently they're just saying that's good news. They're talking, and at least they can maybe go forward from there. So you never know. You might see Pugliarvi joining the Oilers as soon as um, this upcoming season. Next up, flex cap. What is it? Is it a good idea? Flex cap. Now, this is something... Not really official or anything, but when they're negotiating all this uh, CBA stuff, apparently, I don't know if it was one or a couple of um, uh, owners or GMs uh, came up with an idea about a flex cap. Now, I'm only bringing it to you because it's a, I think it's a pretty good idea, maybe. Well, let's talk about it. And uh, I had never heard about it before. Maybe it's something they should explore in the future. And I'm not sure if they're actually still talking about it and they can add it to the CBA or not. I, I doubt it because it would have to be voted on, but... So flex, a flex cap would be uh, clubs would be permitted to roll over any extra cap room from year to year, so allowing them to plan for their own individual circumstances or for period, certain periods of time. So as an example, if you had, like Montreal now has four point something million in cap space. So if they don't use it for any reason in this uh, plan, or if they make the, to the actual playoffs, um, they'd be able to roll that over. So next, in the off season, um, they're signing guys and they uh, bring in a free agent and they go four million over the cap. So the cap is 81.5. So say they come in around 86 million, that covers it. So they'd be able to do that. Now, the only thing I don't know, and I, I guess it hasn't been talked about a lot, but it's an interesting idea, but I don't know, could you carry that multiple years or just, one year to the next, you choose your okay, carry that and then use it, and you got to use it. That, I don't know how that works, um, but it's an interesting idea. The only thing it makes me think of is, um, I guess over time, if you can carry multiple years, it's kind of like not having a cap and allowing guys to just spend the limit and spend big and um, be back in the days where the rich teams had, you know, had all the best players and the poor teams didn't. And that's, I don't know if that's a good idea, but it's an interesting idea. You can carry one year at a time. So if you have an extra cap this year, you want to carry it over, you can carry it and use it. But then that's it. That, you know, if you didn't use it all, it doesn't get carried to a third year. You know what I'm saying? Can't carry multiple years at a time. I think that's better if you can only do the one year at a time. But it makes for an interesting, um, you know, gives you some room to move. So that's an interesting thing. I don't know if they're going to do it. I really don't. But it's an interesting thing. I thought I'd just mention it here because I heard about it today. Never heard about a flex cap before. So that's an option for the future. Although may, I'm not sure. Maybe it'll be in, in, uh, in sometime soon. Um, okay, just going to do a quick members shout out. I've got some new members uh, over the last uh, live stream. So shout out to Jason Pennings, uh, Robert Dufour, and Vidum. Vidum's been a longtime subscriber. Uh, and uh, he took a membership. So just want to... Uh, shout out to you guys. And of course, all the other f members that I have, shout out to you guys too, although I won't name y'all yet right now. And uh, let's move on. Um, oh yeah, also want to announce, I guess, uh, my Habs Coast to Coast podcast. 
Should be coming back next week. Uh, Patty Mac will make his de debut. That's my buddy out in BC, Patty Mac. Uh, we'll be doing the the uh, podcast finally together, and it should make it all that much better because Patty Patty Mac's got a lot of good ideas. Knows what he's talking about. We don't always agree, and it makes for a really good conversation. And hopefully, you guys will enjoy that. So um, that's going to be happening. But don't forget, we're still looking for a local Montreal co-host, somebody that can, once we're allowed to do these things, come over and uh, uh, record the podcast here, or at the very least, maybe remotely here in Montreal. But I'd like somebody local. So if you're locally in Montreal and you can uh, manage to get your 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 butt over to where I am uh, once a week to do the podcast, and you want to apply, just contact me here on, uh, not here on Twitter, on Twitter, at Talking Habs, or uh, by email in the description of all my videos. My email is there. So check that out, or if you're interested, send me off um, something. <laughs> okay, Dale Weiss, apparently signed for next season by HC Lausanne in the Swiss League. So I'd say it's not a... Um, it's not 100%. It's kind of a, a rumor site I got it. Uh, but I saw it in a bunch of places that uh, they always might have signed for next year. Now, it's a UFA, obviously, in the, in the offseason. Very unlikely. I mean, Montreal's not resigning him. Very unlikely he's going to get signed by anybody. So I guess in, in that vein, I don't know how... If they're allowed to do that, he's still under contract. But he signed for next season when he is a UFA. So apparently he's going to the Swiss League for HC Lausanne. Um, the Habs have the fifth youngest Phase 4 roster um, right now. So the fifth youngest, they have, their age is 26.4 uh, years old on average. Uh, Chicago at 25.6 years old. New York Rangers at 25.7 years old. Toronto and Columbus Blue Jackets at 26.1 years old are the only youngest younger teams in Montreal. So I've been saying that Montreal's got a young team. And because of that, there's so much hope and promise for the future. They're young, and they should only get better every year. So everyone complaining about blah, 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 blah. It's a very young team that's going to get better. you got Suzuki, KK. Just look at those two guys. Just look at Suzuki, that last game. No, he wasn't like that. Uh, but he made that pass that shows he's still, of course he's still got it. But just the, you can see the promise of this kid. Uh, he looks like a core, uh, power play quarterback. We're going to talk about that. And uh, just, um, I think the Habs, having a young team shows a lot of promise for the future. And we should only just be happy about, you know, what's, what's possible. Uh, I've done that. Okay. My quick, I guess it's time for my quick thoughts where we will talk about that. So these are just a few quick thoughts um, about the upcoming qualifying round for your mem for members. And if you're interested in becoming a member, I am actually right after this, I'm going to kind of expand on those things in a members only video. So that's next. So members look out for that one. And anybody want to find out about it, got to take a membership starting at, like, they start at $1.99 a month. It's not a lot. And you get access to all the members only videos. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, my thoughts going into the qualifying round, mostly about how the Habs matchup with the, with the Penguins. And um, yeah, let's get into it. So first off, I've watched a little bit of uh, the exhibition games, not just Montreal-Toronto, but I watched a little bit of the Penguins and Flyers game. And I just today watched a little bit of the, uh, the Dallas Stars and the Nashville Predators. And uh, it ended 2-0, by the way, uh, for Nashville. And I've got to tell you, the one thing I can say, I didn't watch any games yesterday, but the one thing I can say that I've noticed is very sloppy hockey. This is like early, kind of like early on in the, uh, in the training camp, very first games of the exhibition season, where they're still sloppy and rusty and their timing isn't right and all those things, and that's what we're seeing. And now they've only got this one exhibition game. And believe me, all that sloppy hockey that we're seeing, not getting fixed up in one game. So you kind of got to expect... Beginning of this qualifying round is going to be a little bit, look like training camp a bit. Um, Suzuki, a, a power play quarterback. Nick Suzuki is going to turn into, and I think very shortly, uh, a power play quarterback. Montreal's power play was horrid, was horrid. And there's problems that, one of the problems is not Nick Suzuki. Nick Suzuki is not a problem. He's going to be able to quarterback that power play off of a half wall, probably on the left side because he's a right-hand shot. It's on the left side because for one-timers. He's going to need to be on the, on the left side. Uh, I, I fully expect that. Um, I just think he's a great player. That pass, he, that he faked the shot and threaded a pass in through almost in the crease 
to Tatar. It was beautiful. Um, and I guess we'll skip one over and go to the next one. Time to see Tatar with Suzuki and Drew and with Dino. I wasn't one saying that. Remember, if you watch my videos, I said they shouldn't break up to Dino, Gallagher, Tatar. Um, I'm starting to wonder maybe that's not the case. Um, they're trying to have balanced lines, and that's why Max Domi's on the fourth line, which we'll talk about a little later. Um, but maybe that's not the way to balance your lines. Maybe balancing the lines would be um, finding that ke that chemistry that seems to be with Tatar and Suzuki. That could cement that second line. And you move Drew up with Dano, and uh, hopefully that will work out there. I don't know if they've ever played together, but maybe it's time to see if that works out. And that can balance out the scoring a little bit better and maybe create a little bit more scoring. Because I don't know that Suzuki and Drew have any chemistry together. It doesn't seem to be that way yet. I'm, I'm not positive of it, but it seems like Tatar and Suzuki do have some chemistry. Uh, we skipped over Les Weber, or Les Weber Weber on the power play. What I mean by that is, even though I, I kind of misread what I was watching, remember I live streamed during the game. I didn't see all the power plays and everything, but I think I was wrong when I said it doesn't look like they're doing the pass pass look for Weber. I think they're still doing that, and the the, the power play was horrible. They gave up two shorthanded goals. They were 0 for six. It's it's horrible. Back to the same thing. As a matter of fact, I was watching Scotia and Canadian, and he made a really good point to say that that game between Toronto and Montreal kind of emphasized everything that was wrong with the Habs during the season, right? It really kind of emphasized that word, emphasized everything that was wrong. The late goal in the period, early goal in the period. So the game started 33 seconds in the game, a goal. I think in the second period, it ended, the period ended like at 1935, there was a goal. Um, so this was a problem. Their power play sucks. That was a problem. Their penalty kill was good. They went, uh, they went three, you know, on the, on the uh, penalty kill. So their penalty kill was doing okay, but that power play, really bad. They need to do something. Weber is not, I don't think Weber is a power play quarterback. It's going to be another thing. I agree with Scotian Canadian on that, I, that he's not turning out to be a good power play quarterback. I think you should maybe put your money in the kids, Suzuki and KK, maybe have them on different uh, the different units and let them start quarterbacking the power play. I don't think Jonathan Drew has a power play quarterback. I just don't. It hasn't worked out. I, I don't. I don't know. But something has to change, and they got to stop looking Weber all the time. It's quite obvious that the other team knows what they're going to do, can read the, where the play is going, and there's zero success. And all they, once they know that, they can really pressure them and put them off balance, and they never get set up properly and uh, in their in the offensive zone. And I don't know, something's got to change, and they've got to change their strategy. I think. Okay, uh, I guess we're here. Domi on the fourth line, a bad idea. So uh, Claude Julian said he wanted to have balanced lines. Max Domi's on the fourth line, but he's skating with Dale Weiss and uh, Jordan Wheel, and that means that Domi's going to have ice time. And guess what? He had the second most ice time uh, on the Habs for the exhibition game. If that's the case, he's bringing Weiss and Wheel along with him on a lot, and that's not. They don't have. You're not going to win games like that, Max Domi. I don't think if Max Domi's going to be a center. Maybe it's not on this team even because we're set down the center with Dano, uh, Suzuki, KK coming up. I don't think there's room for Domi on the on this as a center, and that's for sure past next season. So maybe you can say next season he could still find a spot. Maybe you're going to work it out. Past that, I don't see how Domi fits down the middle on the Montreal Canadiens unless you're getting rid of somebody, uh, Suzuki, KK, or Dano. So, to me, I've been saying this for a while. I've done lineup videos. Put him on the wing. He's a natural left winger as far as he was drafted as a left winger. First three years, he was a left winger. And he came here because they were desperate for a center. They put him there. Put him back on the wing. We're not desperate anymore. Got to start getting that worked out. How the hell are we going to know if he can play there again and be successful there if we don't play him there? Or we stop playing them there because he doesn't want to anymore. Who's the who's the coach? Who's the who's in charge? I don't get it. I think Domi should be on the wing. Not that he's forced to play there. He's a winger. He's a left winger. I think it's a natural position for him. That's where he should be. 
Not a good idea. It didn't, it didn't look good. It did not look good. Now, I'll give this. Domingan did miss a week of camp, so they didn't have a lot of time with that line to get it going. Okay, I'll give you that, but yeah, I still don't think that's the spot for him. Where to play Victor Mete? So, again, I'm on record as thinking that Victor Mete should probably play on the third line pairing, and I think maybe I was wrong on that because... Mete actually would be a good, is a good, and I thought he was good with them, with uh, Weber on top of the words I got out. I thought Mete and Weber was a good pairing in that Weber is a little slower now, obviously with his age, and with Mete's, um, with Mete's wheels, he can cover for a lot of stuff uh, that Weber can I think I just think he makes a good pairing for Weber. You got a good experience, stay-at-home kind of guy. A little slower, and you got a younger guy with a good shot, good passer, got really good numbers. People don't realize Weber uh, Mete's numbers are a lot better than people give him credit for. But a lot of the things he does, and I think it might be might be really good um, until we until Romanov is ready to maybe to take that first spot. Put Mete there. So I think it maybe should be Mete, Chirac, Kulak. And they can work that out. I don't know. But I think Mete maybe is playing in the wrong spot. He's not helping the team there. And uh, he needs to be in the top four in the top four position. So we'll have to see how that works out. That's my new opinion. So it's my new opinion on rethinking everything, seeing what's out there, seeing what's being said, thought about it, and I think they're right. Mete is in the wrong position if he's not playing with Weber right now. Is Julian doing the job? <laughs> I guess this is my thoughts, my quick thoughts on all this stuff is actually um, I have to be saying uh, I was wrong, I think, on things, and this is another one. Uh, Claude Julian, I've been saying I don't know. I'm sort of happy with him, and I think he'll keep his job, but you know what? One of the things I was really disappointed in when I watched the game, and it turns out in watching other people who do what I do, they had the same reaction, is that kind of I wanted to say that I can't back Claude Julian. After seeing what I saw... Some of it doesn't make any sense. Why are you still doing some of these things? It's already tried and not proven to be working. Why are we still doing some of the things he's doing? He's not using the kids properly. Like, I think there's a lot of things that he's doing wrong. I don't know if Coach Julian <coughs> is the right coach anymore for this team. So I'm not really sure that, you know, I don't think he's the right coach. I, th I don't think you fire him here. I think he's going to obviously do the qualifying round and wherever they go in the playoffs. I think that he's going to do that. But, you know, I think next season, if they don't, if they don't make a change in the off season, he's going to be on a very short leash next season. I think he needs to make some changes. He's going to have to coach a little differently. He's got to use the kids a little differently. He's just, I don't know, he's not, when something doesn't work, he doesn't seem to move on from it. And uh, maybe think a little bit outside the box on the, on the power play. And I, maybe that's uh, Muller's fault. Muller, if, he, if he's the one that's in charge of the power play, which I think that's how it is, uh, something wrong there. They're going to need to make some changes in the offseason. Something has to change. That power play should look better, and it's not. And I, I, I thought they were doing different things. I heard about it, read about it. We're trying different things, and we're doing different things. And I, I don't know, didn't really look that much different. The results were, that were no different. Horrible. Okay, there you go. I'm going to expand on some of that <laughs> in the next video for the uh, members only. Hopefully, I didn't expand too much on it here. Actually, the video is a little longer than I thought. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. While you're down there, please give me leave me any comments about this video, about anything I brought to you here, any stories, about any of my thoughts here. Leave me in the comment section what you think about that. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and ring that notification bell. That's also down there, and that's going to get you your daily fix of Blue Blonde Rouge right here at Talking Habs. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Please stay safe out there. Wear a mask where you need to. And you can come back here and watch more videos at Talking Habs. And that's it. Peace out, y'all. See you next video. For members, I'll see you next video as well. Bye-bye, y'all.